laughing. We all know what this is. We all know this is vinegar. We also know how cheap vinegar is. This bottle I bought for 50 euro cent. But what you probably don't know is that vinegar is a lifesaver. With this bottle of vinegar, I can screen 1,000 women all over the world so that they will not develop cervical cancer. Do you know that every two minutes a woman dies in the world because of cervical cancer? Um, two minutes, gone. Two minutes already. They, every two minutes, a woman dies. Unnecessary. In Holland, 200 women a year. Still too many. But in developing countries, 200,000 women, even more because we don't know, are dying of cervical cancer. Imagine the impact on the families and on the children. The WHO calculated that the loss and the death of a mother has to be multiplied with a factor 5 till 10 to see what the impact is on the family and the local economy. We know the women is the are the foundation of their family, and 80% of the work in the world is done by women. I'm Lex Peters, and uh, I'm a cardio-oncologist in the Leiden University Medical Center. After I did my training in tropical medicine, I went to Kenya for more than three years as medical officer of health. I worked on the border with Uganda. I have seen so many women dying from cervical cancer. They came in the hospital late, in advanced stage of their disease. There was no treatment. I saw them leaving the hospital, carrying their children, knowing that she was going to die in pain and isolation, leaving the children with very often no future and falling into prostitution or begging on the streets. Then I realized that if I ever have the opportunity to do something on this heartbreaking situation, I would not hesitate. When I became a kind oncologist and a specialist in cervical cancer, I said, now I have to put a stop to the loss of so many lives in the world. Another two minutes. Do you know that cervical cancer is 100% preventable and curable? Most cancers affect older women and are caused by DNA uh, damage. But cervical cancer is caused by a virus, the human papilloma virus, what cannot be cleared by the immune system of the woman at that moment. In Holland, it has become a very uh, uh, not frequent disease at this moment. But in the third world country, about 500,000 women are suffering from cervical cancer. And while we have treatments to cure some of most of these women, there 80% of the women die of this disease. But we can be winners because it takes about 10 years before a normal cell, what gets infected by the virus, becomes a cancer cell. 10 years to diagnose abnormal cell and the patient will not develop cancer. In the Holland, we know that we have the pap smear and all women between the age of 30 and 60 are getting this pap smear. This is very expensive and very complicated. If the cells are abnormal, 
the abnormal tissue is excised. But it can be much cheaper, and it can be much easier. I told you, we use the vinegar. We put vinegar on a cotton stick and tip it on the cervix. If the cells are getting white, we know they are abnormal cells. And we can treat that woman at the same moment. We freeze the abnormal cells. Another two minutes. We freeze the abnormal cells. And it has no complications. They keep on menstruating and are able to get pregnant and deliver children. Because this is, in a lot of cultures, very important. They are sometimes left by their husband and don't get any respect of their community if they are not able to get any more children. Is it, it is very cheap. It costs less than eight euros. Imagine, there was a woman, Angela, from the north of Kenya. Her mother died of cervical cancer. She came for the screening to the clinic, and abnormal cells were found, and she was treated at the same moment. She was very happy and went back to her community, the village, and she told her friends, and she told all the other women, I went to the screening. They approached me with a lot of respect, and they treated me. It was painless. I'm cured, and I'm healthy. All women who are sexual active should go for screening. And that is what we want so deeply, especially in those countries where cervical cancer is killing so many women. One way or another, we have to involve the men. We have to involve the men in our awareness, our information and education. First, because they are very often the cause of spreading the virus. Second, in a lot of culture, the woman need consent of her husband to go for screening and to be treated. And this can be very frustrating. Another woman uh, died. I have to look at this. So this is the vinegar we're using. These are the women in Bangladesh. I was in Bangladesh screening. And a woman was having abnormal cells. So I told her, I say, you have a serious disease, what can easily become cancer, but we can treat you. And she was very happy that she was diagnosed. But she said to me, I have to ask consent from my husband. The husband said no. That woman went home to die of cancer, leaving her children as orphans. And probably the man would go for another wife. I felt so disappointed and also angry and frustrated. You there, you teach the people how to do the procedure. You can save a life, but you're not able to treat those women. What does the Female Cancer Foundation do? We train nurses, midwives, doctors to do the see and treat program. That means awareness by the community health workers so that the women come to the clinic the diagnostic by applying the vinegar and treating the woman by, cryosurgery, by uh, freezing, cryosurgery. But we not only teach them to do the procedure well, we also teach them to teach others. So there, there is a lot of capacity building and all the women can be reached. We also treat them to approach the women who are sometimes 
very often very poor, are not used to be treated with respect, are sometimes frustrated by the care they get in the hospital. So show the woman respect. We stay for three months to see if the program is running well. Then we leave and they are on their own, because it's an easy to learn program. Here you see me, and uh, I think uh, uh, we need the, the mama light, because in this case, we still have a flashlight and using uh, the, the batteries. Um. Uh, when I realized what happened in Bangladesh by the men, I was also thinking, if that man was having this type of disease, he would run to the nearest by health center or hospital to be treated. If cervical cancer was a disease of men, it would not longer exist. But there are also other cultural aspects involved. For us, it's normal that if you have cancer, you can remove the uterus. The patient is cured and is happy. But if you remove the uterus in some culture, and that woman stopped menstruating, is not able to give any more children, she is left. She is a social dropout. She will be left by her husband, and will not be able to get more respect from her uh, village and her neighborhood. Another two minutes passed. Uh, we teach also, and we call it comprehensive cancer care, that if we cannot prevent a disease and it should be cured, we refer them to the local hospital where we have trained doctors to do procedures. But if you realize that in a country as Ethiopia, there's only one kind of oncologist who can perform those operations, there's all the only one radiotherapy department, and at the time I visited that department, the machine was not working. We know that cure is sometimes not possible, but then we have to give those women painkillers. We have to give them antibiotics against infections because what we don't want them to die in pain and isolation because of the bad smell. These are very important. They have to feel, to have to feel safe. We went back to uh, Kenya to see how the program was working after half of a half a year, I think, and then we went to a clinic and we thought there must be very many women who have been treated because this pro program was done in an HIV AIDS clinic and they hardly saw any. So then we were analyzing what is the problem? Are they suing, seeing the right patient? And then we saw by looking at the procedure that they were doing their very best and probably to please the Western doctor. They were cleaning the vagina with soap. Now, soap is alkaline. It neutralizes the vinegar. So we stopped that procedure, and at that moment, 20% of the women had the disease and could be treated. We also tried to involve the prevention and early diagnostic of breast cancer. You know, in a society, if the level of education is rising and the salaries are rising, you see cervical cancer going down because it's a poverty-related disease. But you see breast cancer, breast cancer going up. Now, you don't want to exchange the one for the other. So we learn the woman about lifestyle changes and we also learn them to do self-examination so that they can find the tumor, the mass, in an earlier stage and she can be treated. Because we have to prevent and cure both. Now, what is my dream? I was very stimulated in what I was doing 
when I met a nurse in Ghana. That was Esther. She was working with so much dedication. And I asked her, what is your motivation? Because I was amazed the way she approached the patient, the way she performed her work. And she said to me, after second year school, I was chosen to, do, uh, to go to the London University to do medical sciences. And after two years, I passed my exams with honors. Then I got a phone call from Ghana. My mother has got cervical cancer and has died. Another two minutes passed. And she said, I was not there when she was suffering. I was not at her funeral when she went back to Ghana. And she said to herself, I'm going to dedicate my life to fight this fatal but preventable disease. Now, I hope that I can bring the program to all those women who are, who are at risk for developing this cancer. The woman has the right to live, to get children, to educate her children, to see them grow, to become a grandmother, if possible, and she wants it. And we can, by the new vaccine, what is there now, and prevents 90% of all the HPV infections, together with our C and Treat program, we can eradicate cervical cancer for the, from the world for the next generation, just like we did with smallpox. But we have to do it together. And that's what the Female Cancer Foundation is trying. Now, I was very annoyed by this terrible sound every two minutes. But do you know what is much more annoying? That while I am speaking here now, the last 50 minutes, seven women have died unnecessarily, probably in pain and isolation. And we have to stop this. And we start with vinegar. Thank you very much.